8, Dave Hompas here from hpylorisymptoms.com. In this video, I want to talk about how H. pylori causes heartburn and gastroesophageal reflux disease. And I want to teach you how H. pylori can also contribute to irritable bowel syndrome as well. So let's begin with the upper digestive system and let's talk about heartburn and acid reflux. H. pylori has a corkscrew shape. It buries into the lining of the stomach and the upper part of the small intestine. It causes a lot of irritation, inflammation and damage in those areas. There's a lot of red raw tissue. And when that red raw tissue comes in contact with acid or food, it can create a lot of pain, which you experience as burning. Now over time, H. pylori can actually cause a reduction in your stomach acid levels. When your stomach acid level drops too low, a couple of things can happen. First of all, something called the lower esophageal sphincter or LES actually becomes weak. And that's the structure that separates the food pipe, the esophagus, from the stomach. When it becomes weak, your stomach contents are allowed to splash back up into the esophagus. And that happens, as I say, because of low stomach acid. You have little bits of acid and undigested food and things like that splashing back up into your esophagus. You can feel a lot of irritation and pain there. And that's what we call uh, acid reflux. Now, also when you have low stomach acid, you can't digest your food properly. And the food is going to hang around in your stomach and not be moved on into the intestine as quickly as you would like it to be. As a result of that, you can get a lot of putrefaction because it's very hot in your stomach. Not only do you have all the acid, but from a temperature perspective, you're looking at 37 degrees Celsius and that's pretty hot in there. And it doesn't take long before everything starts to bubble up and wash around like a witch's cauldron. And again, that increases the chance of having these bits of acid and stomach contents splash back up into your esophagus and cause a lot of irritation. But how could H. pylori, if it's living in the stomach, create irritable bowels? Well, this has a lot to do with the fact that it reduces the stomach acid level. Because as soon as you lower your stomach acid level and you don't digest your food properly in the stomach, it puts more pressure on the small intestine. At the same time, while you have all that undigested food going through into your small intestine, the low stomach acid also opens you up to the development of conditions like candida overgrowth or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or possibly even parasites as well. And when those microbes start to get a foothold in your intestine, then they can start to cause a whole bunch of problems that masquerade as this thing the doctors call irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. By having a load of those little bugs hanging around in your small intestine, you can get a lot of inflammation and irritation pretty much anywhere down that 20 foot tube, all the way from the top of the small intestine, right the way down to the large intestine. And that's gonna create gas. It's gonna create changes in the muscle activity, which can create constipation or diarrhea. Because of the inflammation, you're gonna have potentially pain in there. It may be dull pain, it may be quite sharp abdominal cramps. So from top to bottom, if you have H. pylori and it suppresses your stomach acid level, not only is it gonna cause heartburn and acid reflux, but it's gonna give you the potential of dumping undigested food into your intestine, and it's gonna increase the chance of other microbes getting in and causing problems further down the digestive system as well. And all of that put together leads to this symptom or this syndrome called irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. I don't personally believe IBS exists. If I had an irritable bowel, I'd just want to know what is irritating the bowel. And the usual answer is bad bugs, low levels of digestive secretions like acid and uh, pancreatic enzymes, and a lot of the time the food that you're eating as well. Now, if you've been diagnosed with either heartburn or IBS, you'll find the information at my website very helpful. Just go to hpylorisymptoms.com and there's a whole plethora of information in there that you can read and that you can watch in terms of videos and download, and it's gonna help you improve your symptoms in a short space of time. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to catching you again very soon. Thank you.